Hey folks, Un here. Last time on I Played a Thing, El Viento Edition, we had just uh, beaten up on a uh, Mafia indoor worm gear driven tank, and we're told to go to Mount Rushmore. And so here we are, and let's uh, get back to business, shall we? So yeah, this is apparently what Ra Mount Rushmore looks like. Uh, these diamond things, they make a counter appear at the top of the screen which slowly counts down. I have never figured out what that does. It's never had any effect that I could really put a finger on. Uh, so if any of you have any idea what that timer actually affects, uh, I'd love to hear from you. And here we have some watermelons, or... Man, that's loud. Uh, I don't know what these are, but... Yeah. It's a very strange interpretation of Mount Rushmore, I have to tell you. And right about now, after the first stage where you mostly deal with guys that just, you know, kind of flinch and die, this is right around the point in the game where practically everything starts exploding in one way or another. I like to destroy all of the logs here because there are a couple of power-ups hidden within. Not that I really need health, but, you know, it's a thing to do. Besides, it just makes a satisfying sound to hear those, you know, crunch under your feet. Oh, this is fun. You get to kind of sprint across here. And I do believe this is where we get to power up uh, our boomerang uh, capacity so that we can keep an extra one in the air. And there we go. We can now have three out simultaneously, which is a big help. I've noticed Wolf Team has this thing about showing that they can do, you know, uh, software rotation on the Genesis. They never miss a chance to show that off, it seems. Uh, that is a hard jump to make. So I'll tell you what I'm gonna do. I'm just gonna wait down here for the boulders. Which should be along any moment now. Boulders, there we are. Ah. Kind of a tricky ride to hitch, especially going the wrong direction. That's why I like to make that jump up top when I can, but... Easy it is not. There we go. You have to run against the roll to uh, stay on top of the boulders. Sensible enough. And hey, it's Restiana! It's kind of hard keeping your footing here with the... Ow! Bitch! Fortunately, there are some life ups just hanging around. When she hits you with that uh, big spherical thing, it kind of locks you in for a moment. You can't get away. But she's not really a big deal. Overall, the tank is harder. And then a demon shows up and carries her away. And that's level two. You have done a good job. I was impressed, Annette. Who are you? Why do you know my name? Didn't you meet her in the intro? I am Restiana, a sorceress who descended from Lord Hastur like you. Huh? Just see how I can summon Lord Hester. You will not stop me. Do you know what you were saying? You are bound to be offered as a sacrifice to summon Hester. You are lying to me. I will be able to possess the unlimited power of Lord Hester. You are being tricked. 
You can say whatever you want, but be ready for some trouble if you try to stop me. Wait, Restiano! So long for now, Annet. Okay. So that's pretty much that. I think we're supposed to be like in a speakeasy now or something to that effect. Very grossly obese men who explode on death. Always a good uh, addition to any bar. Look at these things! These, these like, one-foot-tall, knee-height pirates. The enemy design in this game just takes very strange turns at times. And they explode upon death as well. Like you do. You can have some fun with these exploding barriers. Barriers? I do, of course, mean barrels. Call correctly, we'll be getting our second uh, magic attack pretty soon. More of those crystals that I don't know what they do. And there are a couple of quasi puzzles coming up with these incredibly fast mice. You just have to find the right route to get past them while not taking tremendous amounts of damage. Not like that. You don't want to do it quite like that. Race! Race! Good times. Now I have to ride one of these fish over the barrier there. I'm sorry if I seem a little banal today. I'm not thinking of anything good to say about these levels. As you can see from the way it kind of swung up to hit the guy there, the boomerang does have limited tracking capabilities. I think there might be some... Ah! I think there might be some health over uh, somewhere on the left here. But I could be wrong. There is clearly some down there, by the way. Alright. Meet in the jar. Now these water dragon things... Uh... That's how we get our next magic. I just have to kill all those guys. And there should be one more, and then I'll get the water magic. Alright, here we go. Now to put out these fires, I have to use the water magic. Which, I don't know, always kind of looked to me like Annette sprung a leak. And water was just kind of slowly flowing out of her body. And on we go. To fight this gelatinous cube thing. I like to use the water magic here to hit the, uh, the little satellite parts. Because the water will go right through the cube. And you can hit those guys. And that makes life quite a bit easier. I totally whiffed that one. Oh, there we go. 
And will this finish off the last one? Yes, it will. All right, now I can get to work on this guy. What it does, you make dents. Uh, you make dents in it by hitting uh, the cube with the boomerangs, and they kind of uh, wave back and forth like that. And it stops uh, moving periodically, which is your chance to you know, punch some deeper holes in, get some shots off at the nucleus. But then when it starts moving again, you have to mind that you don't get hit by the dents that you just created. And that's about